Murder in the first degree, premeditated homicide, is the most serious charge tried in our criminal courts. You have heard a long and complex case, ladies and gentlemen, and it is now your duty to try and separate the facts from the fancy. One man is dead. The life of another is at stake. If there is a reasonable doubt in your minds as to the guilt of the accused, then you must declare him not guilty. If, however, there is no reasonable doubt, then he must be found guilty. Whichever way you decide, your verdict must be unanimous. I urge you to deliberate honestly and thoughtfully. You are faced with a grave responsibility. Thank you all. The jury will retire. He doesn't stand a chance. Chewing gum? 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 Thank you, but no. You know something? I know lots of things. I'm in advertising. You know it's hot. Never would have known that if she hadn't told me, would you? I suppose not. I kind of forgot. All I've done all day is sweat. I bet you aren't sweating like that kid who was tried. You'd think they'd at least air condition the place. I almost dropped dead in court. My taxes are high enough. This should go fast anyway. Yes, it's hot. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, everybody's here. If there's anything you want, I'm right outside. Just knock. He locked that door? Yes, he did. What do they think we are, crooks? They lock us up for a little while until... And then they lock that kid up forever. And that's fine by me. I never knew they did that. Sure, they locked the door. What did you think? I don't know. It just never occurred to me. Shall we all admit right now that it is hot and humid and our tempers are short? It's been a pretty hard week. I feel just fine. I wonder what's been going on down at the office. You know how it is in advertising. In six days, my job could be gone. Whole company, too. They aren't going to like this. Well, figure this is our duty. I didn't object to doing my duty. I just mentioned that I might not have a job by the time I get back. Ask her to hire you. She's rich. Look at the suit. Is it custom tailored? Yes, it is. I have an uncle who's a tailor. How does he do? Not too well. <laughs> you know, a friend of his, that's a friend of my uncle, the tailor. Well, this friend wanted to be on this jury in my place. Why didn't you let him? I would have done anything to miss this. And get caught or something? You know what kind of a fine you can pay for anything like that? Anyway, this friend was on a jury once about 10 years ago, a case just about like this one. So, what happened? They let him off. Reasonable doubt. Do you know about eight years later, they found out that he had actually done it? <laughs> a guilty man. A murderer. It's turned loose in the streets. Did they get him? They couldn't. Why not? A man can't be held in double jeopardy. Unless it's a hung jury, they can't try a man twice for the same crime. That isn't going to happen here. Six days. They should have finished it in two. Talk, talk, talk. Did you ever hear so much talk about nothing? Well, I guess they're entitled. Everybody gets a fair trial. That's the system. Well, I suppose you can't say anything against it. How'd you like that business about the knife? Did you ever in your life hear such a story? Oh, look, you gotta expect that. You know what you're dealing with? He bought a switch knife that night. And then he lost it. A hole in his pocket. A hole in his father. Men. An awful way to kill your father. A knife in his chest. Look at the kind of people <coughs> they are. You know them. <coughs> What's the matter? You got a cold? A Lulu. <coughs> These hot weather colds can kill you. I had one last year while I was on vacation, too. All right, everyone, let's take seats. Right, this better be fast. I've got tickets to Buy Buy Birdie for tonight. My husband and I must be the only people in the world who haven't seen it yet. OK, your honor, start the show. How about sitting down? 
The gentleman at the window. How about sitting down? Oh, I'm sorry. It's tough to figure, isn't it? A kid kills his father. Bing! Just like that. Well, it's the element. They let the kids run wild. Maybe it serves them right. There's no point in getting emotional about it. It's a question of evidence, not how we feel. We all agree that it was hot. And then our tempers will get short. That's if we disagree, but this is open and shut. Let's get it done. All right. Now, you all can handle this any way you want to. I mean, I'm not going to make any rules. We want to discuss it first and then vote. That's one way. Or we can vote now and see how we stand. Let's vote now. Who knows? Maybe we can all go home. Yeah, let's see who's where. Right, let's vote now. All right, let us vote. Anybody doesn't want to vote. That was easy. Okay. All those voting guilty, raise your hands. Nine, 10, 11. That's 11 for guilty. Okay. Not guilty. Hey, you're in left field! Okay, 11 to 1. One votes guilty, one not guilty. Now we know where we stand. Do you really believe, do you really believe he's not guilty? I don't know. Oh, after six days, he doesn't know. Six days, I can learn calculus. This is ABC. Well, I don't believe it is as simple as ABC. I never saw a guiltier man in my life. What does a guilty man look like? He is not guilty until we say he is guilty. Are we to vote on his face? You sat right in court and heard the same things I did. The man's a dangerous killer. You can see it. Where do you look to see if a man is a killer? Oh, well. I would like to know. Tell me what the facial characteristics of a killer are. Maybe you know something I don't know. Look, what is there about the case that makes you think the boy is innocent? <clears throat> He's 19 years oh, old. That's <laughs> old enough. He knifed his own father. Four inches into the chest, mm -hmm. an innocent little 19-year-old kid. I agree with you that the boy is guilty, but I think we should try to avoid emotionally colored arguments. All right. They proved it a dozen different ways. Do you want me to list them? No. Would you believe that stupid story he told? No, no. Do you believe the kid's story? I don't know whether I believe it or not. Maybe I don't. So what do you vote not guilty for? There were 11 votes for guilty. It's not so easy for me to raise my hand and send a boy off to die without talking about it first. Who says it's easy for me? Or me? No one. He's still just as guilty, whether it's an easy vote or a hard vote. Is there something wrong because I voted fast? <laughs> not necessarily. I think the boy's guilty. You couldn't change my mind if you talked for a hundred years. I don't want to change your mind. Just what are you thinking of? I want to talk for a while. Look. This boy's been kicked around all his life. You know, living in a slum. His mother dead since he was nine. That's not a very good head start. He's a tough, angry kid. You know why slum kids get that way? Because we knock him over the head. Once a day, every day. I think maybe we owe him a few words. That's all. All right. Life's hard, sure. It was hard for me. Everything we've got, my husband and I fought for. I worked my way through college, where I met him. That was a long time ago, and perhaps you do forget. I fought. My husband fought, but we never killed. <laughs> I know what it's like. I never killed nobody. You've been kicked around, too. Just wait till you've worked in the ad agency, and the big boy that buys the advertising walks in. We all know. In my country, in Europe, kicking was a science, but let's try to find something better than that. I don't mind telling you this, mister. We don't owe the kid a thing. He got a fair trial, didn't he? You know what the trial costs. He's lucky he got it. Look, we're all grown-ups here. You're not going to tell us that we're supposed to believe him, knowing what he is. I've lived among them all my life. You can't believe a word they say. You know that. I don't know that. What a terrible thing for a man to believe. Since when is dishonesty a group characteristic? You hold no monopoly on the truth. All right. It's not Sunday. We don't need a sermon. What this man says is very dangerous. I don't see any need for arguing like this. I think we ought to be able to behave like ladies and gentlemen. 
Right. Oh, all right, if you insist. Thank you. Sure. If we're going to discuss this case, why, let's discuss the facts. I think that's a good point. We have a job to do. Let's do it. If you all don't mind, I'm going to close the window. Oh. It's blowing on my neck. If you don't mind, I'd like to have the window open. But it was blowing on me. Don't you want a little air? It's summer. It's hot. It was very uncomfortable. There are 12 of us in this room. It is the only window. If you don't mind. I have some rights, too. So do the rest of us. Couldn't you trade chairs with someone at the other end of the table? Mm -hmm. Right, I will open the window of someone for trade. Take my chair. Thank you. Shall we get back to the case? Yes, let's. I may have an idea here. I'm just thinking out loud now, but it seems to me that it's up to us to convince this gentleman that we're right and he's wrong. Maybe if we each talk for a minute or two, you know, try it on precise. That sounds fair enough. Very fair. Supposing we go once around the table. Okay, let's start it off. Right, we'll start with you. Oh, well, I just think he's guilty. I thought it was obvious. In what way was it obvious? I mean that nobody proved otherwise. <laughs> nobody has to prove otherwise. Innocent until proven guilty. The burden of proof is on the prosecution. The defendant doesn't have to open his mouth. That's in the Constitution. The Fifth Amendment, you've heard of it. Everyone has. Well, sure, I've heard of it. I know what it is. I, what I meant. Well, anyway, I think he's guilty. No reason. Just guilty. There was a life at stake here. Okay, let's get to the facts. Number one, let's take the old man who lived on the second floor right underneath the room where the murder took place. At 10 minutes, on, uh, at, at 10 minutes after 12 on the night of the killing, he heard loud noises coming from the upstairs apartment. He said it sounded like a fight. Then he heard the boy yell to his father, I'm going to kill you. A second later, he heard a body fall and he ran to the door of his apartment, looked out, and saw the kid running down the stairs and out of the house. Then he called the police. They found the father with a knife in his chest. And the coroner fixed the time of death at around midnight. Right! Now what else do you want? It doesn't seem to fit. The boy's entire story is flimsy. He claimed he was at the movies. That's a little ridiculous, isn't it? He couldn't even remember what picture he saw. That's right! Did you hear that? You're absolutely right. He didn't have any ticket stub either. But who keeps a ticket stub at the movies? Oh, that's true enough. I suppose, but the cashier didn't remember him. And the ticket taker didn't either. Look, what about the woman across the street? If her testimony don't prove it, then nothing does. That's right, she saw the killing, didn't she? Let's go in order. Just a minute. Here's a woman who's lying in bed and can't sleep. It's hot, you know. Anyway, she wakes up and she looks out the window. Right across the street, she sees the kid stick the knife into his father. Now how can she really be sure it was the kid when she saw it through the windows of a passing elevated train? She's known the kid all his life. His window right opposite hers across the L tracks, and she swore she saw him do it. I heard her swear to it. Okay. And they proved in court that you can look through the windows of a passing L train at night and see what's happening on the other side. They proved it. Weren't you telling us just a minute or two ago that you can't trust them? That you can't believe them? So, then I'd like to ask you something. How come you believed her? She's one of them, too, isn't she? You're a pretty smart fellow, aren't you? Now take it easy. Come on. Sit down. What do you get, what do you get you all worked up for? Relax. Gentlemen, they did take us out to the woman's room and we looked through the windows of a passing L train, didn't we? Yes, we did. And weren't you able to see what happened on the other side? I didn't see as well as they told me I would see. But I did see what happened on the other side. You see? Do you see? Let's calm down now. It's your turn. I'll pass it. That's your privilege. What about you? I don't know. I started to be convinced, you know, with the testimony from the people across the hall. Didn't they say something about an argument between the father and the boy around 7 o'clock that night? I mean, I can be wrong. I think it was 8 o'clock, not 7. Oh, that's right. 8 o'clock. Mm -hmm. They heard the father hit the boy twice, and then saw the boy walk angrily out of the house. Right. What does that prove? Well, it doesn't exactly prove anything. It's just part of a picture. I didn't say it proved anything. 
Anything else? No. I don't know. Most of it's been said already. <laughs> we can talk all day about this thing, but I think we are wasting our time. I don't. Neither do I. Go on. Look at the boy's record. He stole a car. He's been arrested for mugging. I think they said he stabbed somebody in the arm. They did. He was picked up for knife fighting. At 15, he was in reform school. And they sent him to reform school for stabbing somebody. Mm -hmm. This is a very fine boy. Ever <laughs> since he was five years old, his father beat him up regularly. He used his fists. So would I, on a boy like that. Or if I couldn't, I'd see that his father did. You're right. It's the kids. The way they are, you know, they don't listen. I've got a kid. When he was eight years old, he ran away from a fight. I saw him. I was so ashamed. I told him right out, I'm going to make a man out of you, or I'm going to bust you up in a little piece of truck. When he was 15, he hit me in the face. He's big, you know. I haven't seen him in three years. Rotten kid. I hate tough kids. You work your heart out. All right, let's get on with it. We're missing the point here. This boy, let's say he's the product of a filthy neighborhood and a broken home. We can't help that. We're not here to go into the reasons why slums are breeding grounds for criminals. They are. I know it. So do you. Children who come out of slum backgrounds are potential menaces to society. You said it there. I don't want any part of them. Believe me. I've lived in a slum all my life. No, wait a second. I used to play in a backyard that was filled with garbage. Maybe it still smells on me. Now, let's be reasonable. There's nothing personal about living there in There is something personal! Come on now. He didn't mean you, Feller. Let's not be so sensitive. Who did he mean? I can understand his sensitivity. Now, let's stop the bickering. We're wasting time. It's your turn. All right. I had a peculiar feeling about this trial. Somehow I felt that the defense counsel never really conducted a thorough cross-examination. Too many questions were left unasked. While it doesn't change my opinion about the guilt of the boy, still, I agree with you that the defense counsel was bad. So? This is a point. What about facts? So many questions were, were never answered. What about the questions that were answered? For example, let's talk about that cute little switch knife that fine, upright kid admitted buying. All right, let's talk about it. Let's get it in here and look at it. I'd like to see it again, Mr. Foreman. We all know what it looks like. I don't get the point of seeing it again. What do you think? The gentleman has a right to see exhibits and evidence. Fine, my lady. This knife is a pretty strong piece of evidence, don't you agree? I do. Now let's get the sequence of events right as they relate to the switch knife. The boy admits to going out of the house at 8 o'clock after being slapped by his father. Or punched. Or punched. He went to a neighborhood store and bought a switch knife. The storekeeper was arrested the following day when he admitted selling it to the boy. I think everyone agrees that it's an unusual knife. Pretty hard to forget something like that. The storekeeper identified the knife and said it was the only one of its kind he had in stock. Why did the boy get it? As a present. For a friend of his, he says. <laughs> Am I right so far? Right. You bet she's right. Now listen to the lady. She knows what she's talking about. Next, the boy claims that on the way home, the knife must have fallen through a hole in his coat pocket. That he never saw it again. Now there's a story. Do you know what actually happened? The boy took the knife home, and a few hours later stabbed his father with it and even remembered to wipe off the fingerprints. Everyone connected with the case identified this knife. 
Now, are you trying to tell me that someone took it up to the boy's house after picking it up off the street and stabbed his father with it just to be amusing? No. I'm saying that it's possible that the boy lost the knife and that someone else stabbed his father with a similar knife. It's possible. Take a look at that knife. It's a very strange knife. I've never seen one like it before in my life. Neither had the storekeeper who sold it to him. Aren't you trying to make us accept a pretty incredible coincidence? I'm not trying to make anyone accept it. I'm just saying it's possible. I'm saying it's not possible. <gasps> oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> what are you trying to do? Yeah, what is it? Who do you think you are? Look at it. What is this problem? Can you believe it's the same knife? Not quiet. Let's be quiet. Shh. Shh. Where did you get this? I got it in a little junk shop around the corner from the boy's house. It cost two dollars. Now listen to me. I'm listening. You pulled a real smart trick here, which you proved absolutely zero. Maybe there are ten knives like that. So what? Maybe there are. The boy lied and you know it. Maybe he didn't lie. Maybe he did lose a knife and maybe he did go to the movies. Maybe the reason the cashier didn't see him was because he sneaked into the movies and maybe he was ashamed to say so. Is there anyone here who didn't sneak into the movies once or twice when they were young? I didn't. Really? Not even once? We didn't have movies. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he did go to the movies. Maybe he did it. And he may have lied. Do you think he lied? Oh, that's a stupid question. Sure he lied. Do you? And you don't have to ask me that. You know my answer. He lied. Do you think he lied? Uh, I don't know. Now, wait a second. What are you, the boy's lawyer? Listen, there are still 11 of us who think he's guilty. You're alone. What do you think you're going to accomplish? If you want to be stubborn and hang this jury, let me try it again. And found guilty, sure as he's born. You're probably right. So what are you going to do about it? We can be here all night. If only one night. A man may die. Oh, now come on. Well, yes, that's true. I think we ought to get on with it now. Yes, let's. How do you like this guy? <laughs> but what do you say? You're the one holding up the show. Obviously, you don't think the boy is guilty. I have a doubt in my mind. But you haven't really presented anything to us to make it possible for us to understand your doubt. There's the old man downstairs. He heard it. He heard the boy shriek it out. The woman across the L tracks. She saw it! We know the boy bought a switch knife that night, and we don't know where he really was. At the movies? Earlier that night, the kid and his father did have a fight. <laughs> He's been a violent kid all the way, and while that doesn't prove anything... Still, you know. I have a proposition to make. I want to call for a vote. I want the eleven of you to vote by secret ballot. I'll abstain. If there are still eleven votes for guilty, I won't stand alone. We'll take in a guilty verdict right now. Okay. Let's do it. Well, that sounds fair. Is everyone agreed? I certainly am. Let's roll it. Perhaps this is best. Guilty. 
Guilty. Not guilty. Guilty. How do you like that? Who was it? I think we have a right to know. All right. Who did it? What idiot changed their mind? Is that the way to talk about a man's life? Whose life are you talking about? The life of a dead man or the life of a murderer? I want to know. Who? So do I. Excuse me, this was a secret ballot. No one looked while we did it, but now I want to know. A secret ballot. We agreed on that point, no? If the juror wants to remain a secret... What do you mean? There are no secrets in here. I know who it was. What's the matter with you? You come in here and you vote guilty and then this slick preacher starts to tear your heart out with stories with some poor little kid who just couldn't help becoming a murderer. So you change your vote. If that isn't the most... Now sickening. hold it! I agree with you that the boy is guilty, but let's be fair. Hold it? Be fair? That's just what I'm saying. We're trying to put a guilty man into a chair where he belongs. And all of a sudden we're paying attention to fairy tales. Now just a minute. Now you listen to me. Let's try to keep this organized, gentlemen. It isn't organized, but let's try to be civilized. Please, I would like to say something here. I have always thought that a man was entitled to have unpopular opinions in this country. This is the reason I came here. I wanted to have the right to disagree. Do you disagree with us? Usually I would. In this one case, I agree with you. But the point I wish to make is that in my own country, I am ashamed to say... Oh, now. What do we have to listen to? The whole history of your country? <laughs> it's always wise to bear in mind what has happened in other countries when people aren't allowed to disagree. But we are, so let's stick to the subject. Yeah, let's stick to the subject. I want to ask you, what made you change your vote? I want to know, too. You haven't told us yet. Why do you think I did change my vote? Because I do. Now, get off of it. There's nothing for him to tell you. He didn't change his vote. I did. I was going to tell you, but you're so sure of yourself. Sorry. Okay, now. Maybe you'd like to know why. Let me tell you why that kid's a- The lady wants to talk. Thank you. This gentleman chose not to stand alone against us. That's his right. It takes a great deal of courage to stand alone, even if you believe in something very strongly. He left the verdict up to us. He gambled for support, and I gave it to him. I'd like to hear more. The vote is 10 to 2. That's fine. If the speech is over, let's go on. If there was anything in the kid's favor, I'd vote not guilty. I don't see what it is. Neither do I. They're clutching at straws. As guilty as they get. That's the boy, I suppose. It's that one juror who's holding out, but he'll come around. He's got to, and fundamentally, he's a very reasonable man. I guess so. They haven't come up with one real fact yet to back up a not guilty verdict. It's hard, you know? Yes, it is. And what does guilty beyond a reasonable doubt really mean? What's a reasonable doubt? Exactly. <coughs> when a life is at stake, what is a reasonable doubt? You've got to have law and order. You've got to draw the line somewhere. If you don't, everyone would start knifing people. Not much doubt here. Two people think so. I wonder why. I really wonder why. You do hear stories about innocent men who have gone to jail, or death sometimes, and then years later, things turn up. And then on the other hand, some killers get turned loose and they go and do it again. They squeeze out on some technicality and kill again. <clears throat> Look, buddy, now that we've kind of cooled off, why, uh, I didn't mean to get nasty earlier. Well, you know how it is. Nothing personal? Okay. Look, supposing you answer me this. If the boy didn't kill him, who did? This 
As far as I know, we're supposed to decide whether or not the boy on trial is guilty. We're not concerned with anyone else's motives here. I suppose. But who else had a motive? The boy's father was along in years. Maybe an old grudge. Remember, it is guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. This is an important thing to remember. Everyone's a lawyer. Supposing you explain to us what your reasonable doubts are. This is not easy. So far, it's only a feeling I have. Oh. A feeling. Perhaps you don't understand. No, I don't. A feeling? What are we going to do? Spend the night talking about your feelings? What about the facts? You said a mouthful. Listen, the old man heard the kid say to his father, I'm going to kill you. A second later, he heard a body falling, and 15 seconds after that, he saw the kid run out of the house. Where's the reasonable doubt in that? That's right, and let's not forget the woman across the street. She looked into the open window and saw the boy stab his father. She <laughs> saw it. Now, that's not enough for you. It's not enough for me. What is enough for you? I'd like to know. How'd you like him? It's like talking into a dead phone. <laughs> the woman saw the killing through the windows of a moving elevated train. The train had five cars, and she saw through the windows of the last two cars. She remembers the most insignificant details. Well, what have you got to say about that? I don't know. It doesn't sound right to me. Well, supposing you think about it, lend me your pen. Tic-tac-toe. We might as well pass the time. This isn't a game. Now wait a minute! This is a man's life. Who do you think you oh, are? Right, let's take it easy. I've got a good mind to walk around this table and belt him out, please. I don't want any fight. Did you see him? The nerve! The absolute nerve! All right, forget it. It don't mean anything. Gentlemen, we were talking about elevated trains, weren't we? Yes, we were. So? All right. How long does it take an elevated train going at top speed to pass a given point? What has that got to do with anything? How long would it take? Guess. I wouldn't have the slightest idea. Neither would I. I don't think they mentioned it. What do you think? About 10 or 12 seconds, maybe. I'd say that was a fair guess. Anyone else? I would think about 10 seconds, perhaps. About 10 seconds, yes. All right, we're agreed. 10 seconds, what are you getting at? This. An L train passes a given point in 10 seconds. That given point is the window of the room in which the killing took place. You can almost reach out of the window of that room and touch the L, right? That's right, I tried it. <laughs> so? Now let me ask you this. Did anyone here ever live right next to the L tracks? I live close to them. <coughs> they make an awful lot of noise, don't they? <laughs> yeah. I've lived right by the L tracks. When your window is open and the train goes by, the noise is almost unbearable. You can't hear yourself think. Okay, you can't hear yourself think. Get to the point. The old man who lived downstairs heard the boy say. He didn't say it. He screamed it. The old man heard the boy scream, I'm going to kill you. And one second later, he heard a body fall. One second. That's the testimony, right? <coughs> right. The woman across the street looked through the windows of the last two cars of the L train and saw a body fall, right? Right. So? The last two cars. The last two cars. What are you giving us here? An L train passes a given point in 10 seconds, or two seconds per car. That L had been going by the old man's window for at least six seconds, or maybe more, before the body fell, according to the woman. The old man would have had to hear the boy say, I'm going to kill you, while the front of the L was roaring past his nose. It's not possible that he could have heard it. What do you mean? Sure he could have heard it. With an L train going by? The boy yelled it out. An L train makes a lot of noise. It's enough for me. It's enough for me, too. <laughs> I don't think he could have heard it. Maybe the old man didn't hear it. I mean, with the L noise. What are you people talking about? Are you calling the old man a liar? Something doesn't fit. Well, it stands to reason. You're crazy. Why would he lie? What's he got to gain? Attention.
Maybe. You keep coming up with these bright sayings. Why don't you send one into the newspapers? They pay two dollars. What does that have to do with a man's life? Why might the old man have lied? You have a right to be heard. Well, it's just that. It's just that I looked at him for a very long time. The seam of his jacket was split under his arm. Did you notice that? He was a very old man with a torn jacket. And he carried two canes. I think I know him better than anyone here. This is a quiet, frightened, insignificant man who has been nothing all his life. He's never had recognition, his name in the newspapers. Nobody knows him after 75 years. This is a very sad thing. A man like this needs to be recognized, to be questioned and listened to and quoted just once. This is very important. And you're trying to tell us that the old man lied about a thing like this just so he could be important? <laughs> no. He wouldn't really lie, but perhaps he'd convince himself that he heard those words and recognized the boy's face. Well, that's the most fantastic story I've ever heard. How can you make up a thing like that? I'm not making it up. You must be making it up. People don't lie about things like that. He made himself believe he told the truth. What do you know about it? I speak from experience. What? I am the same person. I think we all understand now. Thank you. Look, if you want to admit that you're a liar, that's fine by me. No, that is too much. She's a liar. She just told us so. She did not say she was a liar. She was explaining. Didn't you say that you're a liar? Please. She was explaining the circumstances so that we could understand why the old man might have lied. There is a difference. A liar is a liar. That's all there is to it. Please, have some compassion. Gentlemen, please. We have our job and our duty here. I think they've covered it. I hope we have. Is there anything else? Cough job? No, thank you. Anybody want a cough job? Come on, let's get on with it. I'll take one. Thank you. All right, now there's something else I'd like to point out here. I think we proved that the old man couldn't have heard the boy say, I'm going to kill you. Well, I disagree. Let's hear him through anyway. But. Supposing the old man really did hear the boy say, I'm going to kill you. This phrase. How many times has each of you used it? Huh. Probably hundreds. If you do that once more, Junior, I'm going to murder you. Come on, Rocky, kill him. We say it every day. This doesn't really mean that we're going to kill someone. Don't the circumstances alter that somewhat? The old man was murdered. One thing more. The phrase was, I'm going to kill you. And the boy screamed it at the top of his lungs. That's the way I understand it. Now don't try to tell me he didn't mean it. Anybody says a thing like that the way he said it, they mean it. It's how they mean it. Then <laughs> let me ask you this. Do you really think the boy would shout out a thing like that so the whole neighborhood would hear it? I don't think so. He's much too bright for that. Bright? He's a common ignorant slob. He don't even speak good English. <laughs> He doesn't even speak good English. <laughs> the boy is clever enough. I'd like to change my vote to not guilty. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Vote is 9 to 3 in favor of guilty. I'd like to know why you've changed your vote. There is a doubt. Where? What is the doubt? Well, there's the knife. Oh, fine. Oh, he talked you into believing a fairy tale. Go on. Give us the reasons. The old man, too. Maybe he didn't lie, but then just maybe he did. Maybe the old man doesn't like the kid. Oh, well, that isn't the end. I believe there is reasonable doubt. What are you basing it on? Stories that this guy made up? <laughs> he ought to write for Amazing Detective Monthly. He'd make a fortune. <laughs> Listen, the boy had a lawyer, didn't he? 
Why didn't his lawyer bring up all these points? Lawyers can't think of everything. Oh, brother. You sit in here and pull stories out of thin air. Now we're supposed to believe that the old man didn't get out of bed, run to the door, and see the boy beat it downstairs 15 seconds after the killing? That's the testimony, I believe. And the old man swore to this. Yes, he swore to this only so he could be important. <laughs> Did the old man say he ran to the door? Ran, walked. What's the difference he got there? I don't remember what he said, but I don't see how he could run. He said he, he said he went. I remember it now. He went from his bedroom to the front door. That's enough, isn't it? Where was his bedroom again? Down the hall somewhere. Down the hall? Are we to send a man off to die because it's down the hall somewhere? I thought you remembered everything. Don't you remember that? No, I don't. I don't remember either. Mr. Foreman, I'd like to take a look at the diagram of the apartment. Why don't we have them run the trial over? Just so we get everything straight. His bedroom is down the hall somewhere. Do you know? Do you know exactly where it is? Please. A man's life is at stake, do you know? Well? Mr. Foreman. I heard you. All right. What's this one for? How come you're the only one who wants to see the exhibits all the time? I want to see this one, too. So do I. And I want to stop wasting time. Are we going to start waiting for all that nonsense about where the body was found? No. We're going to find out how a man who's had two strokes in the past three years, and who walks with a pair of canes, could get to his front door in 15 seconds. He said 20 seconds. He said 15. How does he know how long 15 seconds is? You can't judge that kind of thing. He said 15. He was very positive about it. He's an old man. Half of the time he was confused. How could he be positive about anything? <coughs> well, uh, you know. No. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you know. Is this what you wanted? That's right. Thank you. Sure. It's my job. You want this? Yes. Please. Do me a favor. Wake me up when this is over. I looked at that diagram for two hours. Enough is enough. Go ahead. All right. This is the apartment in which the killing took place. The old man's apartment is directly beneath it and exactly the same. Here are the L tracks, the bedroom, another bedroom, living room, kitchen, bathroom. And this is the hall. Here's the front door to the apartment, and here are the steps. Now, the old man was in bed in this room. He says he got up, went out into the hall, down the hall to the front door, and opened it, and looked out just in time to see the boy racing down the stairs. Am I right? That's the story. That's what happened! Fifteen seconds after he heard the body fall. Correct. His bed was at the window. It's twelve feet from his bed to the bedroom door. The length of the hall is forty-three feet six inches. He had to get up out of bed, get his canes, walk 12 feet, open the bedroom door, walk 43 feet, and open the front door. All in 15 seconds. Do you think this possible? You know it's possible. I don't see why not. He would have been in a hurry. He didn't hear the scream. He can only move very slowly. So I had to help him into the fitness chair. You make it sound like a long walk. It's not. If our old man uses canes, it's a long walk. What are you doing? I want to try this thing. Let's see how long it took him. I'm going to pace off 12 feet to the length of the bedroom. You're crazy. You can't judge that kind of thing. Perhaps if we could see it. This is an important point. It's a ridiculous waste of time. Let him do it. I can't see any harm in it. Foolish, but go ahead. Get me a chair, please. <laughs> All right. This is 
the bedroom door. How far would you say it is from here to the door of this room? I'd say it was 20 feet. Just about. 20 feet is close enough. From here to the door and back is about 40 feet. It's shorter than the length of the hall the old man had to move through. Wouldn't you say that? A few feet, maybe. Look, this is absolutely insane. What makes you think you can do this? We can't stop him. Do you mind if I try it? According to you, it'll only take 15 seconds. We can spare that. <laughs> Who's got to watch with the second hand? I have. When you want me to start, stamp your foot. That'll be the body falling. We'll time you from there. Let's say he keeps his canes right at his bedside, right? Right. OK. I'm ready. I'm waiting for the hand to get to 60. <laughs> Speed it up. You walk twice as fast as that. This is, I think, even more quickly since the old man walked into the courtroom. <laughs> no, it isn't. If you think I should go faster, I will. Speed it up a little. Stop. Right. What's the time? 15, 20, oh. 30, 35, 39 seconds exactly. That can't be. 39 seconds. Now that's interesting. Hey, now you know. What do you think of that? 39 seconds. 39. And the old cripple swore on his oath it was only 15. He may have been a little bit off on the speed since the old cripple moved at, but 24 seconds off. Well, now you know. Far be it for me to call anyone a liar, and even allowing for quite a difference in speed between the old man and you. Why, there's still quite a... Quite a discrepancy. Yeah. It's my guess that the old man was trying to get to the door, heard someone racing down the stairs, and assumed that it was the boy. I think that's possible. Assumed? Now listen to me, you people. I've seen all kinds of dishonesty in my day, but this little display takes the cake. What dishonesty? Tell him! You come in here with your heart bleeding all over the floor about slum kids and injustice, and you make up these wild stories. And you've got some soft-hearted old ladies listening to you. Well, I'm not. I'm getting real sick of you. What's the matter with you people? The kid is guilty. He's got to burn. We're letting him slip through our fingers. Our fingers? Are you his executioner? I'm one of them. Perhaps you'd like to pull the switch. For this kid? You bet I'd like to pull the switch. I'm sorry for you. Don't start with me. What it must feel like to want to pull the switch. Shut up! You're a sadist. Shut up! You want to see this boy die because you personally want it, not because of the facts. You are a beast. You disgust me! Shut up! Oh, hey! Let me okay. go! I'll kill him! I'll kill him! <laughs> you don't really mean you'll kill me, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Responsibility. This is a remarkable thing about democracy. That we are. What is the word? Ah, notified. That we are notified by mail to come down to this place and decide on the guilt or innocence of a man. Of a man we have not known before. We have nothing to gain or lose by our verdict. This is one of the reasons why we are strong. We must not make it a personal thing. Thank you. Very much. Why do you say me? We forget. It's good to be reminded. 
I'm glad that we're going to be civilized about this. Well, we're still nowhere. No, we're somewhere. Or getting there, maybe. Maybe. Who's got an idea? I think maybe we should try another vote. Mr. Foreman? It's all right with me. Anybody doesn't want to vote? Let's vote. Yes, vote. It's all right. Let's do it. <clears throat> I want an open ballot. Let's call out our votes. I want to know who stands where. That sounds fair. Anyone object? I'll call off your jury numbers. I vote guilty. Number two. Not guilty. Three. Guilty. Four. Guilty. Five. Not guilty. <laughs> Six. Not guilty. Seven. Guilty. Eight. Not guilty. Nine. Not guilty. Ten. Guilty. Eleven. Not guilty. Twelve. Guilty. Oh. That's six to six. I'll tell you something. The crime is being committed right in this room. The vote is six to six. I'm ready to walk into court right now and declare a hung jury. There's no point in this going on anymore. I'd like to know why you changed your mind. And why you changed your mind and why you did. There are six people here who think that we may be turning a murderer loose in the streets. Emotion won't do. Why? It would seem that the old man did not see the boy run downstairs. I do not think it likely that the old man heard someone scream, I'm going to kill you. Old men dream, and if the boy did scream that he was going to kill, then we have the authority of this man to prove that it might not really mean he's going to kill. Why don't we take it into the judge and let the boy take his chances with 12 other jurors? Six to six. I don't think we'll ever agree on anything. It's got to be unanimous. They were never going to be able to convince him. At first, I was alone. Now five others agree. There is a reasonable doubt. You can't ever convince me that there's a doubt. Because I know there isn't no doubt. I tell you what, maybe we are a hung jury. It happens sometimes. We are not going to be a hung jury. But we are. Right now, a perfect balance. Let's take it into the judge. If there is a reasonable doubt, I don't see it. The doubt is there in my mind. Maybe we should vote. What do you mean, vote? Not again. I still want to know. Vote on what? Are we or aren't we a hung jury? You mean that we vote yes, we are a hung jury, or no, we are not a hung jury? That's just what I was thinking of. We can't even agree about whether or not the window should be open. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make it a majority vote. The majority wins. If seven or more of us vote yes, that we are a hung jury, then we take it into the judge and tell him that we are a hung jury. Right. And if seven or more vote no, then we aren't a hung jury and we go on discussing it. It doesn't seem quite right to me. It's the only solution. I agree. It's the only way. Things to end this. Are we agreed then? Seven or more votes yes, and we take it into the judge. Let's call our votes out. Okay. I vote guilty. Number two. No. Three? Yes. Four. Yes. Five. No. Six? No. Seven. Yes. Eight? No. Nine? No. Ten? Yes. Eleven? No. Yes. <sighs> oh, no! <laughs> it's six to six. We can't even get a majority to decide whether or not we are a hung jury. I went along with the majority vote on this question, and I didn't agree with voting that way, not really. And I still don't, so I'm changing my vote. I say that, no, we are not a hung jury. I believe that the boy is guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. And there are some things I want to find out from those people that changed their minds. <coughs> then we aren't a hung jury, so we go on. Good, we go on. Why did you change your mind? He, he seems so sure, and he has made a number of good points, <laughs> while he only gets mad and insults everybody. Does the anger and the insult change the guilt of the accused? The boy did do it. Are you going to turn a murderer loose in the street 
because one of the jurors gets angry when he thinks a murderer is being turned loose. That's true. There is a doubt. I don't think so. The track is straight in front of the window. Let's take that point. So the L train would have made a low rumbling noise. L trains screech when they go around curves. So the old man could have heard a scream, which is high pitched, and it is a tenement and they have thin walls. Good, good. That's it. That's it. And what if the old man was wrong about how long it took him to get to the door, but he was right about whom he saw running down the stairs? Please remember that there weren't any fingerprints on the knife, and it is summer, so gloves seem unlikely. Now I want you to listen to this lady. She's talking sense. And it might have taken a few seconds for him to get a handkerchief out and wipe away the fingerprints. This is a point. Why don't we just time this one? To see. Just what are we timing? Yes, let's be exact, please. I am saying that the old man downstairs might have been wrong about how long it took him to get to the door, but that he was right about whom he saw coming down the stairs. Now, it may have taken the murderer about 39 seconds to wipe away the fingerprints and get down the stairs to the place where the old man saw him. The boy, that is. This is right! We reconstructed the old man getting out of bed and going to the door, and we timed that. Now let's reconstruct the actual crime. As well as we can reconstruct it. I think a murderer could use up 30 or 40 seconds pretty easily at that point. Let's reconstruct the killing. Yes, let's. Here, you do the stab. No, I'll do it. Why don't you be the one that gets stabbed? Don't forget, you take one second to fall. And he was found on his side, on his right side, so fall and roll onto your right side. If a man hates another person enough to kill them, don't you think it's reasonable to suppose that the murderer would look at his victim for a second or two? Divorce yourself from this particular case, just human nature. Mm -hmm. hey. Yes, it seems reasonable. Hey! Wait a minute! He falls and he ends up on his right side. The father did, but stabbing someone isn't like shooting them, even when it's right in the heart. The father would have worked around for a little bit, lying on the floor, writhing maybe. That's quite possible. There would have been enough oxygen in his system to carry him for two or three seconds, I should think. Wouldn't the father have cried out? Maybe the boy held his mouth. That also seems possible. Also, there's another point we might bring out. Anyone who is clear enough mentally to wipe away the fingerprints after murdering someone, well, that person is also clear enough mentally to look around the apartment or the room in this case to see if there are any other clues. It would just be for a second or two, I should think, but still, he would look around. This gets better and better. We're trying to make it clear. One doesn't talk about quality when murder is involved. <clears throat> Well, let's do it. About this on the fingerprints. Kid wiped the fingerprints off the knife. But what about the doorknob? If I saw a man coming into my home, a man that hated me, and if he was wiping the doorknob with a handkerchief as he came in, it would give me an uneasy feeling. So this means the doorknob must have been wiped after the killing, and this too would take some time. You timed the last one. Why don't you time this one too? All right. Stamp your foot when you want me to start. I want the hand to be at 60. <laughs> I'm going to kill you. Ah! Knobs. Stop. Twenty. Yeah, twenty. Twenty-five. Twenty-nine. About twenty-nine and a half seconds, I'd say. And whoever did murder the old man, and I think it was the kid, 
still had to run down the hall and down the stairs. At least one flight of stairs. You see? You see? The old man downstairs may have been wrong on the time, but in view of this, I think it's quite reasonable to assume that he did see the kid run downstairs. So, now both time sequences check, the one you did and the one we did, what with running downstairs and everything, it does pretty much check out on times. Mm -hmm. Sure, he's an old man who wants attention. She's probably right, but the old man feels the way everyone does. A life is at stake. So the story of the old man may well be true. Except for the fact that he absolutely swore under oath that it was only 15 seconds. We seem to all agree it was 25 to 40 seconds later. You are now admitting that the old man lied in one case and told the truth in the other. I admit that this does tend to confirm the story of the old man, but in part he is now a proven liar. And this is by your own admission. Well, that may be true that the old man lies in part, but I think it will change my vote once more. Guilty. And what about you? What do you think now? I'm not just sure what I think. I want to talk some more. At first I thought guilty, and then I changed. Now I'm sort of swinging back to guilty. And what about you? No, I am in real doubt now. Real doubt. I say guilty. I was right the first time. Now we're beginning to make sense in here. The vote seems to be about nine guilty and three not guilty. One more question about the old man downstairs. How many of you live in apartment buildings? I do not know what you're thinking, but I know what I'm thinking. What's that? I do not live in the tenement, but it is close. There's just enough light in the hall so you can see the steps. No more. And this murder took place in the tenement. Remember how we stumbled on the steps? The police officers were using big bulbs. And one even had a flashlight, remember? An old man who misjudged the time by 20 seconds. On this, we all agree. The old man looked down the dark hallway of a tenement and recognized a running figure. He was 100% wrong about the time. It took twice as long as he thought. Then could the old man not be 100% wrong about who he saw? That's the most idiotic thing I've ever heard. You're making that up out of thin air. We're a hung jury, let's be honest about it. <laughs> Do you truly feel that there's no room for reasonable doubt? Yes, I do. I beg your pardon, but maybe you don't understand the term reasonable doubt. <laughs> what do you mean I don't understand it? Who do you think you are to talk to me like that? How do you like this guy? He comes over here running for his life, and before he can even take a big breath, he's telling us how to run the show. <laughs> the arrogance of him. No one here is asking where anyone came from. I was born right here. Or where your father came from. Maybe it wouldn't hurt us to take a few tips from people who come running here. Maybe they learn something we don't know. We're not so perfect. Please, it's all right. I'm used to this. Thank you. It's not all right. OK. OK. I apologize. Is that what you want? That's what I want. All right. Let's stop the argument. Who has something constructive to say? Well, something's been bothering me a little. This whole business about the stab wound and how it was made, the downward angle of it. Don't, you know? don't tell me we're going to start that again. They went over and over in court. I know they did, but I don't go along with it. The boy is five feet, eight inches tall. His father was six feet, two inches tall. That's a difference of six inches. It's a very awkward thing to stab down into the chest of someone who's half a foot taller than you are. Look, you're not going to be satisfied till you see it again. I'm going to give you a demonstration. Somebody get up. <coughs> OK, now watch this. I don't want to have to do it again. Is that six inches? That's more than six inches. OK. Let it be more. Look out! It's not funny. What's the matter with you? Now just calm down. Nobody's hurt, are they? No. Nobody's hurt. All right. 
There's your angle. Down and in. That's how I'd stab a taller man in the chest, and that's how it was done. Take a look at it, and tell me I'm wrong. Down and in. I guess there's no argument. <clears throat> Did you ever stab a man? Of course not. Did you? All right, let's not be silly. Did you? No, I didn't. Where do you get all your information about how it's done? What do you mean? It's just common sense. Have you ever seen a man stab? No. All right, then let me ask you something. The boy was an experienced knife fighter. He was even sent to reform school for knifing someone, isn't that so? That's right. Take a look at this. Doesn't it seem like an awkward way to handle a knife? What are you asking me for? Wait a minute. What's the matter with you? Give me the knife. Have you ever seen a knife fight? Yes, I have. In the movies? In my backyard. Uh, on my stoop, in the vacant lot across the street. Too many of them. Switch knives came with the neighborhood where I live. Funny that I didn't think of it before. I guess you try to forget those things. <clears throat> Anyone who's ever used a switch knife would never have stabbed downward. You don't handle a switch knife that way. You use it underhanded. Then he couldn't have made the kind of wound that killed his father. I suppose. It's conceivable he could have made the wound, but it's not likely. I don't believe it. Neither do I. You're giving us a lot of mumbo jumbo. <clears throat> what do you think? Well, maybe. What about you? Listen, I'll tell you all something. I'm a little sick of this whole thing already. We're getting nowhere fast. Let's break it up and go home. Before we decide anything more, I would like to try to pull this thing together. <sighs> this should be good. He has a right. Let him go ahead. Do you want me to time this, too? Let's hear him. I'm in advertising. I'm used to the big shots pulling things together. Let's <laughs> chip up a few shots and see if any of them land on the green. I want you all to look at this logically and consistently. We have. Guilty. I want to know. Is the kid smart or is the kid dumb? Huh. What do you mean? This is a boy who has gone to the reform school for knife fighting. On the night of the murder, he bought a knife, a switch knife. It would then take a very stupid kid to go and murder a man, his father, with an instrument that everyone would associate with the kid. I quite agree. He's dumb. However, if he were dumb, then why did he make the kind of wound that an inexperienced man would make with a knife? I'm not sure I understand. To murder someone must take a great emotion, great hatred. And at that moment, he would handle the knife as best he could. And a trained knife fighter would handle it as he had been trained, underhand. A man who had not been trained would go overhand. But the kid is being very smart. Everyone knows that he is an experienced knife fighter. So at that moment, he is smart enough to make the kind of wound that an amateur would make. That man is a smart man. Smart enough to wipe fingerprints away. Perhaps even smart enough to wait until an L train was going by in order to cover the noise. Now is the kid smart or is he dumb? Now wait a well, minute. Well, the woman across the L track saw the murder through the L train. So someone in that train could have seen the murder too. A possibility. But no one did that we know of. It would take an awfully dumb man to take that chance. Doing the murder as the train went by. Exactly. A dumb man. A very stupid man, a man swept by emotion. Probably he heard nothing. He probably didn't even hear the train coming. And whoever did murder the father did it as well as he could. So? The boy is dumb enough to do everything to associate himself with the switch knife. A switch knife murder. And then a moment after the murder, he becomes smart. The kid is smart enough to make the kind of wound that would lead us to suspect someone else. And yet, at the same instant, he is dumb enough to do the killing as an L train is going by. And then a second later, 
He is smart enough to wipe fingerprints away. To make this boy guilty, you have to say he is dumb from 8 o'clock until about midnight. And then about midnight, he is smart one second, then dumb for a few seconds, and then smart again. And once again, he becomes stupid. So stupid that he does not think of a good alibi. Now is this kid smart or is he dumb? To say that he is guilty, you have to toss his intelligence like a pancake. There is doubt, doubt, doubt. I hadn't thought of that. And the old man downstairs. On the stand, he swore that it was 15 seconds. He insisted on 15 seconds, but we all agreed that it must have been almost 40 seconds. Does the old man lie half the time, and then does he tell the truth the other half of the time? For the kid to be guilty, he must be stupid, then smart, then stupid, then smart, and so on. And also, for the kid to be guilty, the old man must be a liar half of the time, and the other half of the time, he must tell the truth. You can reasonably doubt. I'm sold on reasonable doubt. I think I am too. I wanted more talk and now I've had it. I want another vote. Okay. Another vote called for, I guess, the quickest way is a show of hands. Anyone object? Okay. All those voting not guilty, raise your hands. Oh. Nine. Okay. Guilty? Three. The vote is nine to three in favor of acquittal. I don't understand you people. How can you believe this kid is innocent? Look, you know how those people lie. I don't have to tell you. They don't know what the truth is, and let me tell you, <coughs> don't need any real big reason to kill someone either. You know, they get drunk and bang. Someone's lying in the gun. Nobody's blaming them. That's how they are, you know what I mean? Violent. Human life don't mean as much to them as it does to us. Hey, where are you all going? Look, these people are drinking and fighting all the time, and if somebody gets killed, so somebody gets killed. They don't care. Oh, sure, there are some good things about them, too. Look, I'm the first to say that. I've known a few that are pretty decent, but that's the exception. Most of them. It's like they have no feelings. They can do anything. What's going on here? I'm speaking my piece and you... Listen to me. They're no good. There's not a one of them who's any good. We better watch out. Take it from me. This kid on trial. <clears throat> well, don't you know about them? Listen to me. What are you doing? I'm trying to tell you something. I've had enough. If you open your mouth one more time, I am going to scratch your eyes out. I'm only trying to tell you. Sit down, everybody. I still believe the kid is guilty of murder. I'll tell you why. To me, the most damning evidence was given by the woman across the street who claimed she actually saw the murder committed. That's right. As far as I'm concerned, that's the most important testimony. All right. Let's go over her testimony. What exactly did she say? I believe I can recount it accurately. She said that she went to bed at around 11 o'clock that night. 
Her bed was next to the open window, and she could look out of her window while lying down and see directly into the window across the street. She tossed and turned for over an hour, unable to fall asleep. Finally, at about 12.10, she turned toward the window, and as she looked out, she saw the boy stab his father. As far as I can see, this is unshakable testimony. That's what I mean. That's the whole case. Frankly, in view of this, I don't see how you can vote for acquittal. Well, what do you think of it? Well, maybe. There's so much evidence to What do you mean, it. maybe? She's absolutely right. You can throw out all the other evidence. That was my feeling. I don't deny the validity of the points he has made. Shall we say that on one side of the tracks, there is doubt? But what can you say about the story of the woman? She saw it? What time is it? 6.10. You don't suppose they'd let us go home and finish it in the morning? Our little girl has the mumps. Not a chance. Can't you see the clock without your glasses? Not clearly. Oh. Glasses are a nuisance, aren't they? Well, what do you all do when you wake up at night and want to know what time it is? I put my glasses on and look at the clock. I just lie in bed and wait for the clock to chime. My father gave it to me when we married, my husband and I. It was ten years before we had a place to put it. Do you wear your glasses to bed? Of course not. No one wears eyeglasses to bed. The woman who testified that she saw the killing wears glasses. What about her? Did she wear glasses? <coughs> of course. The woman wore bifocals. I remember this very clearly. They looked quite strong. That's right. Bifocals. She never took them off. I think it's logical to say that she wasn't wearing her glasses to bed. And I don't think she put them on to glance casually out the window. <laughs> She testified that the murder took place the instant she looked out the window, and that the lights went out a split second after. She couldn't have had time to put on her glasses then. Now, perhaps this woman honestly thought she saw the boy kill his father. I say she only saw a blur. How do you know what she saw? Maybe she's farsighted. How does he know all these things? Does anyone think there still is not a reasonable doubt? I will always wonder, but oh, there is a reasonable doubt. I think he's guilty. Does anyone else? No. I'm convinced now. There is a reasonable doubt. You're alone. Eleven votes, not guilty, one guilty. I don't care whether I'm alone or not. I have a right. Yes, you have a right. Well, I told you. I think the kid's guilty. What else do you want? Your arguments. I gave you my arguments. We're not convinced. We're waiting to hear them again. We have time. <laughs> to be wandering the streets, a murderer. He's got to die. Stay with me. I'm sorry. I'm convinced. I don't think I'm wrong often, but I guess I was this once. There is a reasonable doubt. We're waiting. You're not going to intimidate me. I'm entitled to my opinion. It's going to be a hung jury. That's it. There's nothing we can do about that except hope that some night, maybe in a few months, while you might get some sleep, you're all alone. It takes a great deal of courage to stand alone. If it is a hung jury, there will be another trial, and some of us will point these things out to the various lawyers.
They're waiting. Not guilty. Not guilty.
like a blind man Sat on a fence, but it don't work Keep coming up with love, but it's so slashed and torn Pressure. Pressure.